The build plate is transparent and upside down. Core XY on the bottom. The tool head is uh, super flat. The Z axis is detachable. Uh, that's right, it's detachable because this entire printer can be transported in a box of filament. Oh, <gasps> wow. This is a Positron Journey Maker, which is a 3D printer known for its unique size. But look closer, and you'll find it something truly special. Hello, I'm James, and I'm building a Positron 3D printer. Sort of, we'll get to that in a minute. In this video, I'll go over the strengths of the Positron engineering and design. I'll unveil the catches and gotchas of this printer's road to mass adoption. I'll assemble a prototype that addresses every concern and share some new building techniques. And of course, I'll leave you with my overall thoughts. The latest designs are less finicky, and it's shaping up to be quite mature. But the best part of it all is the foundations are solid. We have CNC parts linking X, Y, and Z, forming the all-important metal spine. And as suggested by the shape in the logo, we're looking at a build plate mounted 45 degrees to the base, shrinking the footprint to the point where it can fit in a filament box. And one last subtle thing, with any cantilever design, you want as little weight hanging off the end as you can. And this is something that was clearly thought through. And since we have a design that nails the fundamentals, I decided I'd take the plunge. But not just to build one. I want to push the design further. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with. If we look at the parts, we can see a lot of room for improvement. We've got a lot of different hardware here, and certainly it looks like every conceivable length of M3 screw is present here. And of course we have this laser cut aluminum plate which is worth about $30 to $50 alone and all the heat set inserts that become necessary with the base plate design. And we have a lot of parts here and just reducing the part count could change everything and get that price down. So here's a little peek into what I've been working on. It's just a prototype but it shows my thoughts. Bada bing, bada boom, let's see the prototype already. All right, here it is. Uh, I'm gonna start with putting in these motors. They have little wire channels, which is pretty cool. They just slot in like that, and then they screw in uh, to secure them. And one cool thing is you're gonna see only three different types of screws go into this base plate, which is amazing. Um, and uh, we're gonna put in these pulleys and then slide in this gantry and you'll see me fill up uh, each one of these screw bowls which is great to see and then flipping it over we got the power supply and we have that cutout uh, that's very creative but also practical uh, from McFazio's design brought it over good to see um, and then I'll slot in this power supply outlet which is a new part it's cheaper um, and then I'll route the belts uh, going for the belt routing speed run here I've only done this like a hundred times and yeah giving it a test and it is friction free and I'll put on this unmodified journey maker design part right here and yeah we're good to go so yeah this is very effective at reducing parts also Three types of screws make contact with the base plate, and the design is updated so that all the bearings can be tightened down, which is, uh, I mean, it's how it should be. I was not expecting that not to be the case going into this build, so this is a new thing. On all the little bearings, the outer ring sits a little proud of the inner ring. And so you have to add a five millimeter by 0.2 millimeter thick shim. It's crucial to raise the inner ring past the outer ring. Second, it's an improvement to the assembly of the larger pulley assembly. The original design has a smaller bearing squished together uh, and bind up. Instead, you should do it like this. Grab yourself a screw, drop the small bearing, drop the little washer on it, fit the bearing, it can be pretty hard. Drop the tiny shim in the middle. Then 
add that, and then add the final tiny berry. And now you can tighten this bad boy down, really refund it, and it seriously will not bind. And furthermore, there's even a 3D printable jig that you can put these washers in and bang it into a dished concave shape, and that's going to remove that belt chatter. Even if the previous design worked for you, this new technique has much, much more headroom, and it's going to yield a longer lasting pulley with less wear. Before this, I had no experience with CAD, and uh, learning it in a month has been time consuming and difficult. I would very much appreciate it if you would like and subscribe, because you're not going to want to miss the next build vlog. It's going to be a banger, and I'm going to take this prototype for what's left on the prototype. Well, next I will be adding detachable pop plates, and I will create a super flat extruder hidden within the base using the last remaining volume inside and uh, develop some sort of better filament spool holder and then and only then will I get it printing because if I get it printing too soon I run the risk of stopping too soon and lastly for my overall thoughts I think it should be clear that I love the design and I could see a pre-built version of this printer flying off shelves. A capable printer for kids, perhaps one for every computer in the school's computer lab, a favorite amongst hobbyists, and perhaps one in every maker's personal vehicle. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, like and subscribe, and you can find me and other Positron contributors on the Voxelite Discord server. Link in description.